this is Elsie and this is my channel Aikaya Needs. Welcome if it's the first time that you come here. This is a knitting, crocheting, crafting podcast vlog and I'm um, coming to you from El Salvador in Central America and if you are coming again thank you so much for being there. Please subscribe. I'm gonna leave here my um, Instagram handle, Facebook and underneath I'm gonna leave my Ravelry store link so that you can see the designs that I have there and thank you for being here. I just wanted to uh, record a short episode because it's been a month already and I have to show you, I want to show you my commission knitting crocheting that I've been doing these days and uh, if I don't do it now I won't ever because they're going to Europe and I wanted to show them to you. Uh, I haven't done much knitting when it comes to my things or my designs or my products for the made to order that I've started. I'm gonna leave my made to order uh, Instagram handle here as well. I can ship worldwide so if you're interested or some of your friends are interested let me know. And, and thank you for your recommendations. So what I did is I finished my Hope Sweater Vanilla version, the ones that have Instagram and follow me there. I've seen it already, I guess. And I am very happy with it. It's like very sweatshirt look. And um, today it's raining. We've had a hurricane in Central America. I don't know if you are aware, but it hit the cost the coast, I'm sorry, the coast of Nicaragua, uh, Honduras, and it hit us with rain and Guatemala as well. And um, really we haven't been hit as hard as Nicaragua and Honduras. And we're very sorry but because those are neighbor countries that we feel really close to. And we have friends in those countries and we, when I say we, it's we Salvadorans. So we're very sorry for them. They're having a difficult time. They're going through a difficult time. There are people who have lost everything and they're covered in water, literally. And the wind never picked up here and we've had like very gloomy days. It's a very dark day today. It's uh, Monday, November 9th. 2020 and it's around 4 35 p.m. something like that I'm not sure I'm not wearing a watch and uh, let me see <laughs> yeah 5 p.m. so it's been very dark and it's been raining today it has rained all afternoon so you know, I'm using artificial light because otherwise I wouldn't be able to record. And it's been sad the past week because of those news and also because all the activities were canceled, school was canceled, uh, we've had some issues with, with the internet. We here at home, the ones that have come already know that I don't have Wi-Fi in this room, which is my craft room but uh, we have already gone to the service provider with my mom. She has signed a new contract. They haven't come to fix it. I guess they're gonna change the router. They're going to fix the range, but they haven't come and I don't think they're gonna come now because it's raining. So anyway, and uh, I have started teaching I said it in my last podcast and I have two groups now. One is on Thursdays. There are ladies like my mom and they already know how to knit but they don't knit usually in circular. So I'm, right now we're doing things in pieces but we want to move to circular. And uh, But I'm having fun and to me it's the same to knit in pieces or to knit in circular. It's, you know, seamless or seeming 
doesn't make any difference to me. So yeah, I am super happy. But last week that class got canceled and also I have another class on Friday that got canceled and it's my, I have been there twice. So the last, last week was going to be the third class and it got canceled and I was like kind of depressed and kind of, you know, not happy about it because it changed my routine. I already had a routine and I was feeling super motivated because of my classes. And now, you know, I hope this week it started raining again. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's raining again. So I hope this week we can restart with the classes. I know you're looking at my hair. <laughs> I look like, um, uh, Ariel, right? So the mermaid, the little mermaid, and uh, it's very red. It has copper lights and I had it done yesterday. I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love it. It's just, I know it's super bright. It will tone down as I wash it, but I feel weird, of course, and it's not exactly the, the color that I had envisioned. I took a picture to the hairstylist from Pinterest. I don't know where you get your hairstyles when you go to the hair salon. And this is a double process thing because first they do their um, the strands in one color and then they put another color on top. So, well, the highlights, you know, they do the highlights, but you have highlights and low lights. It's all over your head, the lights. And um, because if you look down, they're all over the place. And then they put the other color on top. So I had a terrible experience the last week because I was looking for my stylist, my hair stylist, and I found out he left the country and I didn't know. So I found out because my former hair stylist told me. So I asked him if he could do it and he said yes last Saturday. But when I got to the salon, he told me the shopping center where they are at had had some problems with the water pipes and they didn't have any water. So I was thankful he didn't put any of the product on my head. And then, you know, can you imagine if I would have had been sitting there with the thing on my head and then they couldn't wash me? Oh my God. So I came back home after an hour driving, an hour getting there and an hour coming back. And I was kind of upset and you know, you know the feeling I'm sure. And, uh, but anyway, then I, I thought, you know what? I have to accept what's going on. Like everything else that's going on that is not going according to my wishes, my plans or anybody's plans or wishes, I guess. And there are so many things that are contradictory right now that you feel hopeless. Hope. <laughs> we need hope. My hope sweater. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And there are a lot of things that I just don't want to do. I have a, a lot of things that I brought from my house and I haven't put any organization whatsoever in them. I feel bad because it's my mom's house and I haven't organized them. But I just don't want to. So I hope tomorrow I'm going to have the wheel to do that. And the warehouse is at the end of the, of the garden. And I don't want to go through the garden to get to the warehouse because it's all muddy. You know, the garden is all muddy because it's, it's wet, it's been raining. And, you know. So anyway, talking about more um, nicer things, talking about nicer things. My friend Matty, who doesn't watch the podcast, she's, not, she's a non-needing friend she's one of my bffs and we're very close and um she loves what i do and i know she appreciates it but she's she's not a knitter but the thing is that she took me to her hairstylist yesterday and um we had so much fun we spent the day together and we went to the to the hairstylist and she did this for me and i like it i like it i i just I just think it's very, very 
bright, but I like it and I understand this color is not for everyone. Um, but yeah, so now I have new hair. <laughs> And I haven't, as I said, I haven't been knitting a lot and I finished this. I also finished the um, Just Call Me Daisy rug, that's a crochet rug. And if you follow me, you know what I'm talking about already. If not, I'm going to leave a picture because I didn't bring it. It's in my room and um, that's for my made to order, but I made it for me, for my bedside. And I love it because it's a pop of bright and it's nice when you step down your bed and you feel the flowers the texture on top of the rug it's really cool my nephews were here yesterday and they seem or not yesterday but saturday and they seem to love the flowers they were like touching the flowers and telling me our oh, auntie auntie this is so nice you know we love the flowers they're so cool they're like growing from the rug so yeah happy and the other happy thing I received is one of my students at the thir in the Thursdays class, the ladies, the ladies that could be my, they're my mom's age. So one of them uh, asked me if I wanted some magazines that she had from Italy. And she said, you know, they're old magazines, but they have like recipes, they have um, like decoration ideas and they have knitting and crocheting ideas and it's more like ideas because they don't give you like full instructions like it was uh, back in the day and i said yeah sure of course those type of things serve me as inspiration and um so she got to class and she had three books three books <laughs> I was in awe. And look at the date. 1969. One is from 67 and the other one is from 71. I was born in 75. It is great. I'm super happy with this gift. And look at this. Look at this. It's beautiful. I'm thinking of using this stitch for my best the best design that I'm thinking about to use my Madeline Tosh wool that I have in my stash and it has been there for, I don't know, almost a year and I am, I, I'm thinking of a detail on the collar with that stitch. So we will see if I can pull it off. I need to swatch, but look at the beauty of things. I am not sure this looks like if it was made in mohair or something like really airy look at the ribbon it's beautiful the ribbon around the bell sleeve so it has so many wonderful things and it's three books i'm so happy and grateful and it will also present a challenge for me as a designer and as a teacher because she i'm gonna show it to you i didn't show it in the spanish version but This is crochet, but she wants this in, in, in uh, knitting. So she wants me to develop a stitch like this one for knitting. And she wants me to direct her to make, to make that long cardigan coat looking type for her daughter. So that's gonna be a challenge, but I'm up for it. And who knows, maybe it will become a pattern, right? So I'm very happy about it. And then I had a commission knitting crocheting and I am happy to tell you I have finished. I was like getting crazy about it because it was eight hats. Of course, they wouldn't be for me, like too many. And um, yeah, I had fun making them, but I was tired already and I had to make pom-poms and for the pom poms, I, I don't use a, a machine or a you know a pom pom maker. I make them myself. So I I I used to cut cardboard, but I didn't remember really. It was so long ago that I made that pom pom. So and you cannot get them here. Like 
yarn pom-poms, you don't get them. You get far for pom-poms, but from Bernat, not like really fancy for 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 pom-poms. And um, so I had to make them. I like making them, but it takes me a lot of time. And I made the circles, the discs out of um, the Bernat Fox for pom poms boxes. So that hard plastic made it easier for me than the cardboard. So, okay, the first one of the eight hats is this one. This is called Rafa's hat. This is by Jorge Locatelli. It's a free pattern. And I made this in 100% uh, acrylic, stranded two strands together. It's the same acrylic as the whole sweater. And this is for a guy, but I think it looks well on a woman too. So that's one. I made another one, another Rafa's hat in acrylic as well. This is Simply Soft. And I made this and that one in five millimeter needle. I didn't do as many repeats as, as Hahi suggests because she did it in a light worsted, but with a four millimeter needle. There was no way I'm ever going to make this in a four millimeter needle. <laughs> I wanted to finish and I think it looks good, you know, it doesn't need a four millimeter needle. Then I'm, I'm gonna do the knitting first and then the crochet. This is the Belfield hat by Spastrico. This is a free pattern. I don't know why this pattern doesn't have more, you know, more. Uh, tags. I guess very few people have knitted it, but I really liked it. It's very elegant, like everything they do. It's simple, it's nice. Um, this is cotton, double-stranded cotton, and these are going to Canada and the UK. Double-stranded cotton. And I did the brim using a three millimeter needle and the upper part in a four millimeter needle. The only problem with this one is that I thought it was so slow. It went so slow. I don't know why. It took me like a week and a half and that put me behind towards my deadline to have this ready. And I don't know why it took me so long. It, it, it was like, it's a four millimeter needle, but still it was like I was knitting and knitting and knitting and I, I didn't, I didn't seem to make progress. So it was a bit frustrating, that one. Then this one I loved is the Trumpeter's Toque. I didn't make notes for this episode, I'm sorry. I didn't have the time, so. Um, this is the Trumpeter's Toque. This is by, designs by Romy. And this one looks complicated. As you can see, it has a horseshoe um, cable surrounded by another cable and another cable. And it has this small texture here and it has a different type of cast on ribbing and I made a mistake. It was like a tubular ribbing, but I didn't like quite get the instructions. I was distracted. So I started and then I stopped. So I, you were supposed to make the whole ribbing tubular and I didn't. That means slipping the knits and knitting the pearls and purling the pearls slipping the knits and purling the pearls. But I only did that, and you were supposed to do a normal row of ribbing in between, but I didn't do that. So I made a mistake and I started, and then I stopped doing it, and I just kept on going normal. But still it worked, I like it. The cast on is not a long tail cast on. It's, uh, this pom pom is going down, I have to do something about it. I think I'm going to just, you know, um, I put a, a button, a button inside so that people can detach it, but I don't want to sew it to the, to the hat. Okay. So anyway, uh, the cast on is not a long tail. It's a cable cast on, and then you do a thing there so that it gets a bit curly. 
I cannot explain to you right now because I don't remember what is it that you do, but it's like two rows of uh, of stuck in it, if I'm not mistaken, before starting the tubular um, ribbing. I really like it. I like the effect. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, look bad. It looks really nice. And uh, it's very snug to your head, but comfortable. This is cotton as well. I made the pom-pom. Double stranded cotton. And I think it turned out great. I really like it. I would definitely need this one again. I don't know if I want to need the bell fiddle from Spastrico again because you know that feeling that I that I wasn't making progress. I don't know. Uh, okay, crochet. I did this one and I didn't mention which pattern pattern this was in my Spanish version. Every time I do the podcast, I start with the Spanish version and then I do the English version. So whenever I'm talking to you, I'm thinking about the things that I didn't say there. And, and when I'm editing, I'm always thinking about the things that I didn't say in one or the other. But, you know, I try not to repeat myself and I try to say the exact same things in each version, but it's just impossible. Anyway, this is the... We are knitters, crochet beanie. This is a free pattern as well. I don't remember if the trumpeter stoke, which was the previous one, was a free pattern or not. This one, because I already had it, and this one is, is really cool. I like it. It looks like knitting, but it's crochet. And you do it sideways. So I made the pom-pom. I thought it was easy, nice, fast. That's why I included it in my made to order. And it's two strands of cotton. And but you can use any fiber, of course. And I love the pom pom. Okay, uh then we have this one. This one is by Lexa Lux. Yeah. The Camden hat. This is crochet. This is like I like it. Don't get me wrong. I like it very much, but it's like stiff. It's like, you know, like if you're wearing a helmet. So it has this nice cable work in crochet. It It is simpler than it looks. Um, it's a free pattern. It has instructions on her blog. It has a YouTube tutorial. Um, it doesn't explain every single detail, in my opinion, not only in the video, but in the pattern, in the written instructions. But it's, you know, if you're ex experienced enough, you can follow it. This was made in a double stranded cotton, and the hook was size F. 3.25 millimeters so the yarn is way thicker than the hook you're using uh, I don't know if that contributes to the effect of helmet thing but it's more not the effect but the feel you know I feel like I have something heavy on my head and it's like a helmet and that doesn't happen all the time with crochet I'm gonna show you another one um, this is the Camden, the same hat, but I made this one in acrylic and I made it a little bit smaller because it's for a little girl. And um, I used the same hook, but and I tried to use the same chain count as for the previous one, but it was loose on my head in these fibers. So I reduced the amount of chains and it's like tighter i have a big head but it's still tighter than the other one so it's not to the point that it's uncomfortable i mean i could wear it the problem is when you put it on because as you know if you're a crochet crocheter you know the chain does not stretch so but yeah for the little girl it's gonna be fine it has the same effect of a helmet And I was saying, not all crochet it's, needs to be stiff. Look at this. This is crochet. And it's not stiff at all. And this is acrylic yarn. This is Bernat. Bernat. Uh -huh. No. No, this is simply soft. Simply soft. Yeah. And uh, I made the pom-pom. 
This one's smaller because it's for the for a boy. And I really like this pattern. This is called the Brooklyn Beanie by Inventorium. I think she is from Australia, if I'm not mistaken. And she has these cute crochet patterns. And I really like the pattern. It was very, very well written. Of course, I bought it. And um, so I can make it again. I like this one a lot. I would definitely crochet this again. And I like the texture and it looks so nice. And the pattern was written in a way that at the beginning you thought it was going to be super hard, but it didn't. And she never made any, any creases. Uh, the cables get longer and longer and and you start from from the from the crown and you go down in a circle and it's just you know it, it only takes shape and obviously it stretches more as you go down but it looks so perfect and I loved it because I have written a pattern in crochet it's in my Ravelry store and it was my first pattern and it's more difficult to write a pattern in crochet than in knitting in my opinion and uh, you know she does it in a way that it's not difficult she gives you pictures of each row and she writes the instructions for each row underneath the pictures so it was a breeze I made this in a few hours and I I loved it and totally recommend it to you very nice and you could use any fiber as well. This is acrylic, but you can totally knead it, crochet it in wool or in cotton or in whatever you like. So yeah, and um, I think that's that's all I had to tell you for now. I am working on developing things for my made to order. It started raining again, and I am. Um, trying to finish my hope sweater pattern the testers not all of them have finished and not all of them have even started but you know that's not holding me up to publish the pattern because by now I know that the instructions are correct or fairly correct and but because nothing's perfect nobody's perfect and um yeah, so, but the thing is that I have not included the instructions for the vanilla versions yet. And even though I have not needed version 2 from my mom, I already know how it goes. I just have to put it in writing. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I suppose I wanted that to happen this week, but I don't know if it's going to happen this week or not. But it's okay. You know, if I've waited so long, it's okay. I just wanted to tell you if you're interested in this pattern, it will include the colorwork version and the two vanilla versions. And if you're interested, please subscribe to my newsletter. I will leave you the link down below or you can find it in my bio in Instagram or in Facebook. And you just subscribe to the newsletter and I, I will see to send you a special discount code higher than the one that I will offer to the public for the launching of the pattern. I really don't know how to send a newsletter yet. I just set up the MailChimp and it's crazy because of all the administrative work that you have to do behind the scenes and that takes time from you actually kneading or crocheting or crafting or sewing or whatever it is it that you want to do. And I understand it's part of the thing. If you're a, a one woman or one man show, you cannot do otherwise. And I would love to hire help, like to teach people and to train people and to, you know, give, give a decent job to someone. But I just can't right now. I can't afford it. And not for my designing, but for my made to order or for other things that I want to develop or start or try. And, uh, but you know, in time, I guess in time, I will be able to do that. I have uh, a lot of ideas and well, I hope you liked this short episode. I hope to see you again soon. And until then, please take care of yourselves and your families. And uh, I send you a big hug. Bye.